Cindy Ming here from Martial Art World and we're at the new location of the Ying Chao Pai Eagle Claw School and it's a great pleasure for me to be standing here with Sifu Xiam Lung of the Eagle Claw. Welcome Sifu and thank you for being here today. Um, how long have you been teaching? Uh, teaching in American about more than 17 years. So my goodness and this is a new location? Yeah, new location. The old one is in uh, 34th Street, so now we move to 14th Street. 14th Street? Yeah. What is the and, exact uh, address? Uh, 14th and 6th Avenue in the corner. Terrific. Maybe you can tell our audience what the Eagle Claw system of Kung Fu is. So Eagle Claw Kung Fu is a uh, northern style of Chinese Kung Fu. So usually our system is uh, a lot of gymnastic inside the form, okay? And also the, the main form is locking him, okay? A different kind of locking. Okay. And also uh, usually kicking, jumping, flipping, and crawling, and then uh, lock the guy can move. So is that good for self-defense? You said locking, so somebody would hold me, say, would I be able to get out of it if I practice for Yeah, if time? you practice good, so it should be lock the guy down and then you, you like to hurt him, that's easy. You don't like to hurt, you don't like to hurt, also lock him down, can move. Okay. Um, the Eagle Claw system sounds like it's good for young people, but what about self-defense for older people? So, uh... Eagle claws are good for young people, but old people have a little bit problem to learn. But if old people to learn better Tai Chi Chuan, the best. Do you teach Tai Chi here? Right. We Wh teaching Tai Chi the... too. This uh, I teaching is a Wu style of Tai Chi. And what are some of the things that make Wu style uh, different, say, than some of the other styles of Tai Chi? So uh, Tai Chi Chuan now have many systems. But Papara in New York City is a lot of uh, young style, uh, a lot of people teaching too. So only teaching Wu style, I think this myself have a school. Is that right? Maybe some people have a private teaching. Uh, do you think Wu style is um, a better than young style? Uh, young style have different the movement because a young style is a movement a small action so uh, Wu style is a the, you know the movement is bigger action okay. so hard is a li hard a little bit than the young style so it's a little harder then yeah um do you think that young people could learn tai chi as well uh, young people to learn tai chi should be a lot of patience but i think young kid can learn it because no patient to learn that. Yeah. Usually, old people have a patient to learn. Okay. Now, but all that you teach, the Tai Chi and the Eagle Claw, is the same. Right. Here in this school. So uh, we separate. So Eagle Claw is an Eagle Claw class. The Tai Chi have Tai Chi class. Okay. Okay. In Eagle Claw, what are some of the movements that make it why is it called eagle claw maybe you can tell our audience so that. eagle claw system is uh, the action usually using the finger to yes. make a claw like the like the eagle okay, eagle look at this. eagle claw so this kind is called southern style of eagle claw but northern usually like that using five fingers to grab it okay so okay. movement up to catching like the plier if catching, can move already. Okay, and then are there some movements like that in the Tai Chi? Tai Chi usually is uh, using internal, the palm use, and also sticky hand, sticky. What do you mean by sticky hand? Sticky means like this, oh, sticky. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. pulling in, feels right. like I can't go. Right. Okay, and you think old people can learn this very well? Old people, you have a patient to learn, uh, should be like two, three years. Also can use it for protect yourself. That's excellent because in New York, it's very important right. to protect yourself. So some people thinking is Tai Chi can fighting. 
But Tai Chi also a good fighter. Yes, if I you can really see. practice to break down the technique to go, practice yes. every day with partner, you also can use in fighting too. Yes. Okay, Cindy Ming here with another Ying Chao Pai practitioner, Mark Deshinowitz. And Mark, you have been at the Eagle Claw for how long? Over 10 years now. My goodness, did you go through the many stages of following Sifu then? Uh, yes, from his early days. It was actually his second school on 28th Street. Is that right? And then we moved to 34th Street, and now we're here on 14th Street. That's great. Um, what made you choose this type of martial art? Okay, Ying Zhao is both a hard and soft style, okay. so it's not a very rigid style. There's a lot of fluid aspects to it. And when I first started, I was a very rigid person. And I felt by studying a style such as this, it would help my body type, uh -huh. as opposed to studying just a hard style, uh -huh. which would make me just more rigid. Did you feel that you have since ma ma gotten to your goals and have become softer? Or to a degree, but not to the degree I would like to achieve. I hear, though, that in martial arts practice, that's something that one always goes after. It almost never ends for them. Yes. that they continue on that. Is that kind of how you feel of, about your practice? Yes, and especially here at Ying Zhao because after a certain amount of time, Tai Chi becomes a part of your Eagle Claw training. So again, that's a further aspect of softness which is added to your training, okay. and it gives a whole new dimension to your training. Is that right? Now, Sifu explained before that Tai Chi is for the older people, that the young people don't have patience for Tai Chi. Now, you're pretty young. How do you, do you agree with that? Uh, it is a hard system for a younger person because they do have a lot of energy. And with Tai Chi, you're constantly trying to control that energy. And you're controlling it from also a very intellectual point of view. What do you mean by that? Well, Tai Chi, there's a lot of philosophy behind it. And if you really don't understand the philosophy behind the Tai Chi, the movement itself is, is very limited. Maybe you can... It sounds like there's a lot in depth behind it, but maybe you can let the audience know a little bit of that philosophy. Well, essentially, it was developed as a way of controlling the body, controlling some of the internal organs and mechanisms. And you constantly work on that as you're doing your form. Your breathing, your balance, the idea of soft and hard, knowing which part of your body is hard and which part is soft. Concepts of yin and yang, it goes on and on and okay, on. Okay, very good. Do you also practice the eagle claw system as well? Oh yes, that's my first and main uh, system. Okay. Where did you yourself learn this martial art? I learned. Yes, you are I learned. Teacher. I learned this. It's quite an interesting story. I learned this is in Hong Kong. Uh, my Sifu is called um, Wei Nong. He teaching and uh, uh, he learned Kung Fu in uh, Jing Mo Association. What is the Jing Mo? Jing Mo have uh, many, many stay in China, like Shanghai, Canton, Beijing, or Hong Kong. So he go to learn many places. But use more Thai is on Hong Kong Jing Mo Association. So the Jing Mo is a wide circle for martial arts. I Jing think. Mo Association, a lot of the martial arts people teaching inside. So before you learn, before he learned the system, should be learn ten form of Jing Mo form first, and then you can choosing the system you.